you've got to use the Lean UX process where it makes sense. Um, it has to make sense. And so where does this actually make sense? I think it makes sense with functional task flow projects. So you have a clear end goal, uh, purchase a camera, uh, uh, check out on a store, reserve a hotel room. If there's a clear task-based goal, I think this works really well because you can create that experience, you can prototype it, you can <coughs> test it. It's, it's easy to see whether you can get your customers and your business owners from point A to point B. I think it works really well there. I think in highly experiential marketing projects, uh, the struggle a little bit more because the end goal is, ne is more nebulous. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's experiential, right? So for example, this is a website uh, for Reese's Puffs that the agency that I worked at worked on. And so how do you know you're done here? How do you know this is the right answer to their problem? The problem is brand awareness and engagement. Um, I still think there are opportunities here where you can show lighter weight concepts earlier on in the process and then head off in a particular direction. But there's definitely a little bit more of a struggle with marketing projects and more subjectivity as to whether or not you've actually hit the end goal and met the target for your audience. So I want to get into a case study uh, of how we've applied this at the ladders um, and how we've made it work. And I call this case study uh, 100 Days of Collaboration because we, we applied the process over the course of 100 days and came out with new functionality on a new website at the end of that 100 days. And so we had. Uh, we, we, we have uh, a, a problem statement at the ladders. And the problem statement is this. We ran focus groups across the country last summer. And people uh, are very much aware of who we are and what we do. Um, well, this is what they say everywhere you go in every city that we went to. You're like monster, uh, but I have to pay for it. So we're a subscription service, uh, a job, an online job service that you have to pay for. And so the, the, the view is that, hey, you're like monster, but I have to pay for it. They don't, under they don't understand why they should pay for it. And to us, that's like a big knife in the heart because of course, we're nothing like Monster, we're very different, and we offer a variety of services. And so this became clear to us that we needed to make, make it very clear why we're different, what we offer that's different, and to, to, do, to do more of those so that it's obvious to our existing clients why they should continue their subscription service with us. And so what we did was we took 50 people from our execution team, and it was a cross-functional team, 50 people, um, and, and, and put them in a room not unlike this room, for, uh, for three days. And we sat them together and we, we put a theme for every day. We had three explicit themes that so provided the constraints and the guardrails to the team. And we said, for, for each day, we're going to focus on a particular theme. So the first day we talked about acquisition and conversion, how do we get more people and get them to sign up. The second day, we talked about our resume and rewriting services. And on the third day, we talked about putting a human into every interaction on our site. And we focused the teams on that. And we got them together to start sketching together. So we had designers, developers, product managers, marketers, operational folks, sales folks, in a team together, seven teams of seven, roughly, in a room, discussing the problem statements together, reaching conclusions about how to solve those problem statements, and then sketching solutions to those problems. And so they got together, and they started talking, and they started sketching. And as, it, as they went through the day, Sorry, it's so hard to see. We started putting these, these big post-it style notepads on the wall. And over the course of three days, we actually filled up. Can you guys see that? Yeah? It's, it, it, if you can't, it's a wall full of post-it style, big post-it sticky pad size uh, sketches that these 50 people created individually. And each one of these things is, is a feature or a function or a workflow about how to solve the problems for that particular day. And they presented it to the entire team. They got feedback from their entire team. And ultimately, our job as, as, as managers of the design of the product team was to take that and boil it down to this. And this became our spec document. This is in a conference, this is still up in a conference room in our office. And we took those, that wall of sketches and we narrowed down, there were duplicate themes, there were overlapping ideas. We narrowed it down to this and we actually estimated our work off of these sketches. And we prioritized scheduled work off of these sketches. And we constantly referred back to these sketches. This was the documentation. Now, that, that's not to say that our designers didn't go and then take some of these and build out the, the, the workflows for them. But this is where we started. And this really was the extent of the project definition. And kind of going back and saying, hey, did we capture the essence of the sketches that the teams created over there? And in the end, what you'll see is we ended up with a brand new website along with a whole bunch of new features on our site. So this is what our website looks like today when you go to theladders.com. And if you go back here, if you can actually see it, you can see it here, especially in this sketch here, 
There's headshots over here. There's headshots up there. There are people throughout the experience. And you see that in the actual website itself. And what made this even more powerful is that every time we launched these features, so we launched fairly regularly, um, every time we launched a feature, an email would go out to the execution team and it would say, congratulations, we launched this feature. Here's the sketch. Here's the finished product. To show them that their fingerprints and the work that they did went from sketch to product. And in between, there's very little, very little documentation. The actual uh, sketches, the prototypes, and the, and, and the product itself became the documentation for what we built. So very quickly, uh, how do I get started? Uh, and and this, is, this is sort of a breakdown of how to build this collaborative sketching culture. And uh, I hope you can take this back to your teams and try this if you're not already doing this. Um, so can anyone uh, guess what, so as far as what role on the team sketched, uh, sketched this uh, UI? Anyone take a guess? What, what type of role of the company is this? Hmm? So the, the developer sketched this. Uh, who sketched that? Anyone? That was me. <laughs> And that one, that's the product manager. So, but ultimately, this is a true question. The true question is the whole team did uh, sketch these, these concepts in what we call a modified design studio uh, or a collaborative sketching exercise. And this is what we took, and, and we scaled this up to 50 people, but you can scale this down to a project team of four or five or six individuals. And the idea is to get a cross-functional team together in one room, and you give them a problem statement, you give them constraints, and then everybody draws. They draw their ideas, they present their ideas to their teammates, and they get critique and they get feedback. And you go through three rounds of that, and you refine that through each round <coughs> until you get to a, a final large state. And I'll show you what the, what the actual templates look like. But what you're doing is you're generating a ton of raw ideas in a cross-functional team. So you've got developers in there, designers, marketers, product managers, stakeholders. And the assets that are being generated in that design studio provide a huge head start for the user experience team because there's a stack of paper this big with some really great ideas on it. And it builds early team-wide alignment. Everybody starts talking to each other because really the bulk of the exercise is conversation. It's presentation and it's critique, not the actual sketching piece. And there's a team-wide feeling of ownership. So when you leave that and you start designing the actual pages, people can see their fingerprints in the work. That's the key. You get the work out there, you get the feedback, you, get, you build that feedback in, and people start to own it beyond just the design. You don't have to and all by yourself. And so very, uh, very quickly, this is uh, the first template, the first round. You do a six up, right? So you've got six tiny little boxes on the page and you give people five minutes, five minutes to sketch six ideas about how to solve that particular problem. And so how much detail can you put in the six boxes in five minutes? Not a lot, <laughs> and that's okay. You get those six ideas, the, idea, the, the goal is to get the ideas down. And then you spend the time presenting and, and getting feedback on those ideas. And once everybody goes, you do three or four higher fidelity ideas. So there's three boxes, three slightly bigger boxes. Five minutes. Take the six ideas you had before, take your feedback, refine up into three, maybe four, uh, slightly more refined ideas. Present it, critique it, get the feedback again. And then finally, five minutes, one big box. Right? Take everything you've learned to date during the session and sketch one final idea. And so you'll notice this takes maybe two to three hours to get this all done with the talking if you've got six or seven people in a room. Uh, you spend 15 minutes of those two to three hours actually sketching. The rest of the time is collaborating, talking, understanding the problem space, working together, and, and a huge head start for you to get going with, as well as less of a need to document everything because people know where the design is heading coming out of this session. And so one final obstacle to uh, the Lean UX process. Anybody know that guy is? Am I dating myself a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Hmm? Oh, you know the actor's name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got me beat for sure. I didn't actually know the actor's name. Um, Greatest American Hero. Uh, one of my favorite shows as a kid. Um, designers want to be heroes. It's true. Don't shake your head. You know you do. You want to be the person 
You want to be the person who designed the iPod. You do. You want that on your resume. You want to be the person who designed Mint.com, whatever the, the hottest, the next UI is. You want to be a hero, especially if you're in agencies. Agencies love to win awards. Right? That's how they get business. We're an award-winning agency. You want to be a hero. The user experience is distinctly anti-hero. It's a team-based approach. It's a collaborative approach. It means getting design work out there in a raw fashion, which is against all designers' training. It's getting feedback. It's incorporating that feedback early. It's uh, those feelings that we talked about earlier in the presentation. Maybe I'm losing control. Maybe the quality's not that great. Uh, and ultimately, it's the team. If, if the end experience that you design wins, that you design wins, it's the team that wins. It's not the individual. And so this is this is a big hurdle to implementing this. You've got to recognize this and 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 head it off as you start to see it because. Designers want to be they want to come in and say, hey, I solved this problem. But in fact, you're solving the problem together collaboratively. Now look, this is where the, uh, this is this, this is the future of design. This is where this is where we're going, right? This is an evolution in, in business process, in companies, uh, in, in user experience design, in usability. This is where things are headed. The companies that can move quickly, that can get to market faster, that can validate their ideas faster, are the companies that are going to win. They're going to disrupt. The, uh, the incumbents, and they're going to create new products and new realities in the space. And as designers, we need to evolve to make sure that we can play in the space and that we can be on the cutting edge of all the up and coming products. So this is, this is an evolution, not a revolution. Uh, and then ultimately, what this, ends getting, what this ends up getting us is back into the experience design business and out of the deliverable business. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.